Keffels is a Twitter user best known for her recent campaign against the website Kiwi Farms. Me being me, I decided to take a look into this as the campaign had been more vocal than those I've seen in the past. It turns out that Keffels herself has had a very tumultuous time on the internet, so let's cut this intro short and dig into everything, cause let's just say things are a lot more interesting past the surface level. Also, I don't normally have to say this, but don't harass anyone talked about in this video. I shouldn't have to say it, but given these circumstances, I feel it's necessary. Info on Keffels, aka Claire Sorrenti, and her childhood is relatively unknown, with her using the online name Keffels growing up playing Team Fortress 2 and Gary's mod on Steam. She figured out she was transgender when she was 12, started to transition her gender identity at 16 after a 42-year-old trans woman hooked her up with medical help, and in 2013 she and her family traveled to Thailand to get gender-affirming surgery when she was 18. Keffels has said that her late father helped pay for the surgeries and spent the rest of his life when she came out advocating for transgender rights up until his passing. Soon after she turned 18, Keffels would start an adult career under a false name, posting the expected content on a website both before and after her surgery. This would go relatively under the radar however, as she had a much more promising career path she decided to pursue as she grew older. Keffels would become a member and organizer of the Communist Party of Canada in 2017, and would post about her communist ideals on her old Twitter account named after her. It's nothing inherently interesting, just a lot of talk about communism being good and showing that she was actually serious about politics and not some random Twitter account. Things weren't looking good for her in real world politics however, as despite running in the 2018 Ontario general election and 2019 Canadian federal election, she would finish dead last in both. She would continue to participate in the communist party until resigning in 2020 after an unknown controversy arose. Luckily for us, Keffels used to run a podcast called The Communist Current, and I managed to find a copy of the episode where she explains her reason for resigning. The episode is much more than just her stating the reason she left the party, and gives a lot of interesting insight on her political identity and the way she carries herself. The beginning starts off with her alluding to people making assumptions and believing lies about her without actually knowing her as a person, before jumping into everything. She goes on to talk about her beginnings with communism starting from early childhood and a trip to Cuba, how she joined the Communist Party of Canada in 2017 after the election of Donald Trump and the Quebec City mosque shooting, and how during trips to both Seoul, South Korea, and Beijing, China, she became more infatuated and content with her political identity. Back at home, she'd work with the party more, knocking on doors and trying to spread communism around her city as her father's health declined due to cancer, before passing away after being in critical care for 28 days. This led to her working as hard as she could, but as time went on her beliefs weren't falling in line with the party anymore, and after sending in an amendment about settler colonialism and leading to a long debate, she decided to resign from the party altogether after not getting the outcome she wanted. Keffels goes on to explain that big leaders in the party disagreed with settler colonialism and didn't recognize its existence which shocked her, along with issues having to do with not being able to talk about said belief during elections and how they tried to control her podcast. She goes on to criticize China for having a massive wealth disparity despite supposedly aligning with communist and socialist ideals, and how they donated billions of dollars to Israel, going against the party's existence and standards. She ends things off stating that she's still a communist, but will forge her own path from there on out after leaving the party behind. Some people call her a snake and opportunist who only had herself in mind and not for the movement after leaving, pointing out tweets how she called the communist party good with trans issues only to elude the complete opposite two days later, along with accusing her of being an online clout chaser in general. There were also rumors of her stealing donation money from the communist party for her opiate addiction and that being the reason she left, but as far as I can tell that seems to be nothing. Keffels herself would say the last time she struggled with her addiction was back when her father passed away and she's been good ever since. I tried looking more into this but couldn't find anything concrete at all, and given this all seems just to be hearsay at the most, it seems this was just a rumor and nothing more. Soon after leaving the Communist Party of Canada, she would get back into her adult career, changing her Twitter account from Communist Party focused to adult content focused. She would tweet out about money struggles during this time and decided to go back into her adult career, making an OnlyFans along with it, where she would do dominatrix work on those willing to partake in said interests. Some of that includes a story involving a guy, 150 bucks and some weed, and another involving a fart video that she made and posted to many vids. 
Said video has a review giving us an idea on what to expect, and so dejected with her adult career, she decided to try something new. Keffels had gotten into Twitch streaming during this time, and even had a new podcast called The Clara Gang Pod, where she would talk about things like being a transgender woman and how she got into dominatrix work. She also seemed to wipe the original Claire Sorrenti Twitter account and reactivate it June 28th, 2020 for Twitch career purposes, and said account is still up to this day as a backup for her main. During this internet soul searching, there was a Twitter account she made that drummed up a lot of controversy in mid-2021, and an account that is still talked about to this very day. Keffels used to run a Twitter account called Catboy Ranch, something that she's clarified herself in the past on multiple occasions. She also made a Discord server for the account, which had a couple hundred people at one point in time, and even had some suspect looking artwork as the server banner, also posting it on the Twitter page at one point as well. The account was mostly just Catboy shit posting, but there'd be some really weird posts such as this one that gave people a weird vibe, and one sending a meme calling someone's ass fat, only for people to find out that they were 16 years old at the time. Recently, some drama will come out with people accusing Keffels in the Catboy Ranch Discord server of some heinous stuff, but it turns out the Catboy Ranch lore goes much deeper and in a different direction than people expected. On June 21st, 2021, Keffels would tweet out her opinion on Lollipix, basically summing it down to the equivalent of CP. Some people on Twitter would get pissed about this for some reason, and so Keffels would start to mass block those defending it and telling them to get help. People would maul and troll Keffels for the next day or so due to her statement, but then something strange would happen that turned things on its head. During the early morning of June 23rd, 2021, a Twitter user by the name of Sorrel would make a post exposing another Discord server called Fanboy Hangout after finding out that a 13 year old was talking sexually and the admins were doing nothing to stop it at all. An admin would be made aware of the 13 year old in their suggested posts and not do anything about it and beat around the bush, basically summing it down to, if we'd ban him nothing will actually stop happening so why do it? And proof of the person being a minor would come out as they had an under 18 role, meaning all those talking to the minor and not telling them to stop or leave the server were some really messed up people. A video will be posted providing further proof, and it will come out that Catboy Ranch, the Twitter account ran by Keffels, was in the server. Keffels would say she had nothing to do with any Thing that was said in the server and left it after being made aware of what was going down. Where things get weird is that Sorrel got suspended soon after posting the thread for the reason being an old chaos post he made, a type of shit posting related to the video game series Final Fantasy. It's also worth pointing out that recently on an alt account, Sorrel has gone on record to imply that Lolly isn't CP, which is against Keffel's belief that it is. Around the same time he got suspended on Twitter, Keffel's made posts saying that a bunch of pedos were writing threads about her and dragging her name into some mess, and gleefully celebrated when one of them got suspended from the site. It's pretty obvious to tell that she was celebrating Sorrel getting suspended from the site, and the claims of her throwing pedo allegations onto someone comes down to opinion on Lolly pics, which for some reason is really decisive on Twitter. Sorrel's thread would get reposted by someone named Dimitri after he got suspended, and some people were accusing Keffels of mass reporting his Twitter account. I tried to look for any hard proof of this and couldn't find any. All I could find were people dunking on her for saying lolly bad when a Discord server where a 13 year old was saying some suggestive stuff. While there's still the possibility she sent her mob to mass support Sorrel's thread, until there's hard evidence it can only come down to speculation at most. Keffels would make her final comments on the drama a couple hours later, making it about herself, saying that she believes people dug this up to try to get the own on her after what she said, and that if she never said anything about this, the drama wouldn't have happened to begin with. She would state that people are being bad faced by lumping her into a group of people with guilt by association logic, and that she joined the Discord server when it was a Vosh stand server to make fun of fans and seldom interacted in it, at one point replying to someone saying she only made a handful of shit posts before becoming inactive. There were also claims of people getting callers with Catboy Ranch on them, but as far as the caller stuff goes, the people seem to all be at least 18 years old when asking for one. I dug through all of Falling Man's posts on Twitter, and the one thing pointing that they're an adult would be right here where they say they don't want to waste money on a car. Catboy underscore F has had mid-20s in their bio since 2019, two years before making their caller post, and Fanboy Politics was 18, as their Twitter bio says their birth was in 2002, and the caller post was in January 2021. Fanboy Finance posted their caller pic on Twitter on January 5th, 2021, and Keffels claims that they were over 18 when they got their caller and rebranded to Twink Bride, and uses this video as reference to show how old they look. While there wasn't any age explicitly attached, I decided to dig further and found out that Fanboy Finance had an OnlyFans account that they started posting content on in December 2020, meaning that they were indeed over 18 years old by the time they got their caller. I also came across their Instagram with a more high def picture of the caller along with them wearing it for those interested. 
So yeah, the Catboy Ranch allegations are all bullshit. The screenshots are from Fanboy Hangout, a server that Kefuls was definitely in, but as far as we can tell, seldom interacted in, and left him made aware of the screenshots and the subject matter. While there's no proof of Kefuls being the reason Sorrel got suspended, it's certainly suspect given she's acknowledged the thread's existence and commented about the screenshots after being made aware of her name being involved, and they just happened to get suspended soon after. The people who all wanted callers were confirmed to be at least 18 years old save for one. The only two things that are weird as hell would be the Catboy Ranch Discord server having the suspect ass profile banner and that pregnant pic, and the post sent to Fanboy Mass where Kefil sent a meme calling their ass fat. Fanboy Mass would turn out to be 16 at the time it was sent, but it can easily be said that Kefils might not have known the age when sending the meme, so as far as that goes, just don't be reckless when posting stuff online. As mentioned before, Kefils started to stream on Twitch and made a podcast soon after leaving the Communist Party, but none of this was getting any major attention towards her name, as she was just like any other run-of-the-mill streamer in the endless void that is Twitch live streaming. She had the Keffels Twitter account since August 2018 and started to use that to promote her streams, along with running Catboy Ranch before that came crumbling down. She first streamed under her name, then under Clara Aloe Vera, then under Keffels with a Z, before finally settling on her online tag spelt the way it is today. Though it looks like Keffels deleted and reactivated her Twitter account as the join date changed to December 2020, it was just like any other account you see on the site. She would mainly shit post and promote her Twitch streams for her followers, nothing you haven't seen before. While researching this video, I came across a multitude of Twitter accounts related to her or referencing her name, but I can't tell which are fan accounts and which are actual alts of hers. Nonetheless, her Twitter addiction has been well documented already given the ones we talked about earlier, and in fact, she started to dabble into her favorite pastime on the site around August 2021. All of this would slowly but surely gain her a small fan base of around 17,000 followers by the time 2022 rolled about. Her account wasn't anything popular, but that would change in March 2022 after getting into beef with the streamer Destiny. Now most people first saw her hatred for him start that very month, but it actually started a couple months prior before the year change. So let's see what issues she had with him before that faithful month rolled by. Things start between Destiny and somebody named Doe, a person who identifies as a transgender deer. They basically would talk shit to each other on Twitter on and off for a year and a half, but things would take a drastic turn as on October 13th, 2021, Doe would have a failed attempt on her own life, with Keffels taking notice herself sending her condolences. Keffels would start to hate Destiny after he said things making fun of her friend Doe's attempt on her life, and would tweet wishing for him to lose his Twitch affiliate status and thousands of dollars and such. However, another instance would make her hate Destiny even more, and this time something that hits a little closer to home than the last. On January 4th, 2022, Destiny would catch wind of Chloe aka Bob posting after she made a statement saying she got 500 miners on HRT, with Destiny replying so. Chloe has gone on record saying she makes her own estrogen in a bathtub and takes it for herself, aptly calling it bathtub estrogen. On top of that, she has also stated on multiple occasions supplying minors with the same bathtub estrogen behind their parents' backs, at one point even hinting at doing it with another person, who a month later ended up saying they were 14 years old. She's even gone on record giving tips on how to make it yourself, and stating how she makes 400 bucks a month from donations showing people how to buy DIY HRT, clarifying that it was just showing them how to buy it. Interestingly enough, these tweets have been deleted from her Twitter page, and as far as I can tell, she nuked all tweets prior to January 21st, 2022, so who knows what went on there. Keffels is close friends with Chloe as she has tweeted out about an intimate experience between the two of them back in August 2021, and so would take offense to what Destiny said to her for doing what she believes is a noble cause, which is give minors access to hormones easier. Keffels herself has made posts on how she has helped get minors on HRT, going into detail on how she would do it through a youth group she helped run, and has gone on record stating she will transgender your children and won't let anybody stop her from doing it. Since Keffels and Chloe think they're doing something noble, seeing Destiny call Chloe a pedo not only pissed her off on Chloe's behalf, but also on her own, as she believes Destiny is spreading a dangerous stereotype around using that language. Even recently, on June 26, 2022, Keffels would start to sponsor Chloe's website, the DIY HRT Directory, with her name plastered at the bottom of the page, stating it's a DIY directory for people under the age of 18 to access hormones, showing she's going full force to support her cause. One of the sellers listed on the site specifically says that it's homebrewed medicine, which is unsettling given the circumstances. With that being said, Keffels would keep quiet as she didn't want to partake in any beef at the moment, and so would move on with their life. However, the straw that broke the camel's back would come just a handful of weeks later and is what finally got some big guys watching her Twitter antics. 
Leah Thomas is a transgender woman who would end up beating her competition in the NCAA Division I National Swimming Championship and in doing so would cause backlash on the internet, with people saying there's a competitive advantage going on due to Leah being male to female. Twitter user Capri would reply to Destiny's claims about the matter on Twitter, say no prior research suggests trans athletes have a competitive advantage in the sports they play after transitioning. Twitter user Ian Miles Chong would quote tweet saying it was a bunch of horseshit and provide a link why they're wrong, and Capri would private their account soon afterwards. Keffels would hop on the train after seeing another friend of hers going through something and tell Ian that his reply caused people to harass Capri and pulled off her now infamous ratio because likes equal winning and power to her, she's even said it herself. I used to think the ratios were really funny and silly, but now I realize that there's power in it. Capri would make a post thanking Keffels for ratioing Ian, and Destiny would catch wind of this post and call it one of the cringiest things he's ever seen in his life. This would be the last straw as Keffels was tired of seeing Destiny making fun of her friends and calling them names, and so she would quote tweet snitching on Destiny as he has been ban evading on his Twitter account. On March 23rd, Destiny would end up getting suspended on Twitch for hateful conduct with no reason given, and Keffels would immediately start to gloat about it, saying how she took away his primary source of income before saying she actually didn't do anything and was just celebrating his suspension in general. Keffels would again tweet trying to get Destiny banned off Twitter for ban evading, and then would turn her eyes to Lauren Southern after she called her out for going after Destiny's livelihood, in which Keffels would ratio her, and Lauren would say that won't make her a real woman before deleting the post, not wanting to get banned off Twitter herself. Lauren would go ahead and restream her first debate with Destiny on Twitch and get suspended herself, showing it was for restreaming Destiny as it's against Twitch TOS to show suspended creators on the site. Keffels would challenge this in her very own tweet, Lauren would show Keffels herself that was for the aforementioned reason and called her out for lying, and Keffels would once again ratio in revenge after being proven wrong. Keffels would go on to accuse Destiny of stealthing people, which is when you take the condom off during action without letting your partner know, a very serious crime with no evidence, mind you, before walking it back after realizing how big of a lie she just said. Oh yeah, meanwhile he stealths people, which is legitimately a form of rape. <laughs> Insane. Insane shit. Isn't that what... Wait, I don't know if he, if he did it. Wait. Backing up, I don't actually know if he did it. All of these Twitter shenanigans would attract the attention of Joshua Moon, the current owner of the website Kiwi Farms, and so he would talk about her on his podcast Mad at the Internet on March 25th, 2022. Keffels would be made aware of this and make a post stating that she would be staying put with the support of her community and she'll be taking the necessary precautions to get past this. She would post a meme referencing how she got Destiny and Lauren banned literally within days of each other, but the very next day she would tweet saying that the people had been actively doxing her and she had to get her mother to shut down all her social media accounts before saying she won't let these people win. The people she's alluding to would be in reference to Kiwi Farms as users had made a thread on her that morning compiling all the information they could find on her. The thread itself had gotten to over 100 pages within a few days, showing that they were really on her case unlike most people they talk about. Around this time is when Keffels would start to ratio everyone and everything on Twitter because it makes her feel powerful. She would ratio again, and 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 again. The whole month of April was basically just her ratioing and talking shit on Twitter now that a bunch of people knew who she was. She even started saying stuff to Destiny's wife simply because she hates the both of them. People would talk about her calling her an asshole and such, but other than playground insults there wasn't really anything interesting going on yet. That is, until summer rolled about. On May 13th, Twitch streamer Stardust was invited onto Dylan Burns' Hippy Dippy Roundtable to talk about the usual political topics you'd come to expect. During the stream, she would find out that Keffels tuned in and after seeing her on it, would make a post stating how she was invited but chose not to go on because she was friends with Flamenco, someone who Keffels absolutely hates as he's a known Kiwi Farms user, and she believes he was part of getting her docs despite no proof at all. Stardust would dip out of the stream not wanting to bring any more unnecessary negative attention and would make a series of tweets on why, mainly dumbing it down to not wanting to cause any trouble for people not involved in her now beef with Keffels. Danabo, the booking manager for Dylan Burns, would go ahead and post his booking timeline, showing that he invited Keffels on May 11th, and after not getting a reply, he would invite Stardust on. Keffels would respond two days later, 11 minutes before the livestream was about to start, only to decline five minutes after the show started once she found out Stardust was involved, even though by that point she was already replaced by her after not responding. 
On May 18th, Stardust was watching a Keffel stream, and when she found out Keffels would add her name to a bot that bans anybody that follows her in her own stream, basically alienating some of her followers and making them choose either her or Stardust over what is essentially a petty beef over being friends with someone she hates. So basically, we're adding to the bot to make it so anyone who follows Stardust automatically gets banned from this stream. If, you fo if you're following Stardust, and you hit follow on this stream, you will be banned from this stream. So here's your message right now. If you're following Stardust, unfollow Stardust, um, because in the next 12 hours or so, when this goes into operation, oh no, I'm gonna get Stardust banned. That sucks. followers will be permanently banned. That is so funny. Weeks will go by, and Keffels will get into some weird beef with the Quartering in June where they basically just shit-talked each other, with the Quartering misgendering her to piss her off, and Keffels going after his sponsors and making fake DMs to goad him into joining the stream to debate her. It was extremely childish from both ends overall, but things would come to a boiling point when Keffels would finally sit down and have a conversation with Stardust on July 10th. Their conversation would start off positively, with Keffels apologizing for being so abrasive and being a general asshole towards Stardust. I want to start off by apologizing for how abrasive that I've been towards you, like especially with the Dylan Burns thing. Uh, th uh, that's fine. I mean, I know you're new to the to the scene and it can be overwhelming and stuff like that. Um, they would converse a bit like any normal people would and go on to clarify some other situations they had. To sum it up, things were heading in the right direction. That is, until Flamenco was brought up. Keffels believes that Flamenco was part of the dog scene because he's part of the Kiwi Farms community, even if he didn't outright search for the information himself, whereas Stardust doesn't believe so and considers him a friend. They would start to discuss their opinions on the matter, and after getting frustrated that Stardust was standing by her own, Keffels would lose her cool. Yeah, so again, I can't speak on behalf of him. Um, I, I would just say that if you want to talk to him about that, that that would be something that he can talk to you about. But I, I can't really comment on that. I do know that, um, I mean, I, I feel like it's kind of hypocritical to be um, blaming him for being part of a forum, right? Oh, shut the fuck up, you stupid bitch. Really? Blaming him for being part of a threat that is engaged in so much harassment that my fucking mother's address was leaked and they went after my family. How fucking discourse brained are you that this is actually something that you would say? Holy. After seeing Flamenco in chat, Keffels would tell Stardust to tell Flamenco she doesn't approve of him being on Kiwi Farms, but since Stardust doesn't have an issue with that and only cares if he posted her docs around, Keffels gets frustrated and berates Stardust after seeing she doesn't follow the same guilt by association mindset. But I need, I need screenshots of him actually posting all docs. Right. I'll get all of those fucking- he didn't post the fucking docs, he engaged in group harassment. If he encouraged- if he encouraged, he encouraged like- encouraged other people by engaging in group- Do you know what group harassment is? You have more than two fucking brain cells? Jesus, Stardust. I know- Their conversation was swiftly and soon after, with both parties talking over each other until Keffels leaves after her failed attempt to bully Stardust into following her mindset. Keffels, Jesus Christ. you have slandered me as a white nationalist, as a white supremacist, as a neo-Nazi. I, I literally you, you've do not done give that a single such shit a, because you are to, to groups. groups. You you've done that to groups of, of this people. To begin with. I was I am such a smaller content creator than you, and I, you think that care. it's okay you know for you to you know, to slander me anything. as a white I, I nationalist, really as a brown woman, by the way. I recommend you watch the video on your own time, but from what we can gather here, it's very obvious this comes down to a difference in mindset. Keffels believes that since Flamenco posted on her Kiwi Farms thread that he's part of the problem, whereas Stardust doesn't believe so because he never actively spread her docs around. Their mindsets didn't mix together, but instead of discussing it in a formal way, Keffels just resorted to bullying and name calling to belittle Stardust in front of her viewers. On July 18th, Keffels will launch up a stream against Destiny, saying how it would expose him to the world as a Kiwi Farms user that promotes the website. The part that covers Destiny shows that he only posted on his own Kiwi Farms thread, and someone complaining on his thread that he used a screenshot from the Keffels thread in a Twitter post and wanted credit, showing that he's looked in her thread before. Something to note is that Keffel showed interest when someone said he was known as Winter on the site before it turned out to be false. He is indeed Winter? You're fucking with me. No, you're absolutely- no. 
That name Winter will be important later on, trust me. The rest of the stream is her trying to manipulate people and say that Destiny and his audience are in cahoots with Kiwi Farms and that he's a multitude of negative things, but there isn't any proof to this at all and mainly comes off as Keffel's reaching as far as she can to villainize Destiny to her audience. Her Twitch account would also get suspended for a moment with no reason given, but the assumption was it was because she had slurs in her thumbnail and Twitch is extremely strict about that kind of stuff. On July 20th, Hunter Avalon would be streaming and talking about the Keffel situation when he went on her Kiwi Farms thread and scrolled through it for his chat trying to find Flamenco and if he had any involvement with the docs at all. This was a clear mistake on his part showing the thread to his viewers, and Keffels would be made aware of this, making a post about what he had just done. He would make his own post saying it was a complete error and a mistake on his part, taking accountability for what he had done, and saying he would delete the stream VOD as soon as he could. Hunter would also wind up getting to apologize to Keffel's face to face as well, but let's just say things went in a direction we're already familiar with. Their conversation starts off fine, with Hunter apologizing to her for showing her docs on stream and saying that he was 100% in the wrong for that. Keffel's mentions Flamenco once more and why Hunter was even talking about him, and Hunter replies saying that it was because he was looking for his involvement in the docs, but then Keffel's made a familiar statement on how it doesn't matter if he was involved with the docs or not, but since he was active in the thread, he is at fault. I think 100% of the people in the thread are complicit because it's a mob mentality. It's a group behavior. And everyone who's in the thread who isn't actively against that behavior is encouraging that behavior. Yeah, I mean, when I'm, and I'm not, I'm not here to defend Flamenco or Kiwi Farms. I, the on, like I said, the only right. reason I was even on Kiwi Farms to begin with is because I saw your debate with Stardust and I was thinking, oh, well, I want to see how much involvement it seemed that Flamenco had with the actual mm -hmm. docs. More conversing goes on, and Hunter would explain his reason for showing the website was to show how convoluted everything was for his viewers. The reason I even showed it there was simply to just show the, the stream how convoluted and chaotic the massive amounts of threads even were. Keffels would start to say it doesn't matter if his intent was good or not, but since he used the site to make money off that, he was still in the wrong, which Hunter finds ironic given she did the same thing when dunking on Destiny on her stream two days prior. You ended up doing the exact same thing that Flamenco did and the exact same thing that Destiny did where it's like, okay, you might not be actively engaging on the forum. You might not have been actively posting docs, uh -huh. but by talking about it and by monetizing the content on that site, you are literally making money off of the targeted harassment that I receive online. Well, I'm sorry, wait, by talking about it? Yeah, by talking about it, by using the content from that website, but you're monetizing I mean, you, it. Didn't you, you've posted the link or, or at least the logs where Destiny posted the link to it. And I know you've talked about the Kiwi Farms thing on your stream, right? Like I, I wasn't yes. getting content off of it. I was explaining the situation, really. Somebody was on at the time too, giving me uh, um, your perspective on things as well. So, or at least they were trying to, but. Their conversation would quickly derail, as Keffels was now focusing on the ideal that monetizing the website and its contents is bad, despite doing the same thing only two days ago, and starts to get frustrated, saying how even though he apologized, he still showed her docs to everyone, basically not accepting the apology and getting caught up in her feelings. That's the only point that I was trying to make. I mean, I guess you more than some other people, you actually published my docs in a YouTube video. Okay. You know, after you I mean, spent yeah, like the entire stream, I recognize that there was a mistake. I don't know what you want me to say me. at this point. After you spent like the entire stream shit talking me to the audience, they start to argue a bit. With Hunter saying he feels Keffels is trying to look for a reason to villainize him in her head and start a fight, and then the sight of a familiar friend causes everything to go haywire. The reason that I feel that you're trying to start a fight is because you keep. Why is Flamenco TV in your chat right because now? By the way, I don't know. I you don't know. I, no, I don't know. People can comment in my chat if they would like to. That's not oh my, my problem right now. The Does thing is, is that you're trying frequently? to walk away Does from the actual- Does he comment there frequently? No. No, okay. No. But you're not going to do any job moderating your chat. Like the people See, who- See, why are- wait, wait, wait. Kefles, yes? please. Yes. Stop. What? Stop doing this stop right what? now. Stop you're you're trying what? to do. No, no, no. You're playing this guilt by association game. Guilt like, by association. At this point, you I've, fucking doxed me using my Kiwi Farm thread. So how are I you get that this, you're going to keep on going back this to this. How much of a manipulated piece of shit? Like, seriously? The, the fact that. You don't know what you're talking about. Because I don't need to take responsibility for criticizing your dumb tweet you don't, beforehand. You I don't need to take responsibility me. for that. You fucking doxed me, dude. I take responsibility for that. 
but you are trying to then criticize me for for other issues as well. Exactly. Because if you want to take responsibility for it, why are you not listening about the bigger picture surrounding how you fucked up? Wait. The fuck up was the mistakenly showing the screen which had the docs on it. The fuck up was not me criticizing you prior. No, no, Fine, no, no, no. but I mean, at the end of the day, it's, yeah, okay. it's not really. You're gonna keep like it, doing this like ooh woo shit at me. I'm not like, doing oh, okay. any ooh woo shit. Okay. I'm trying to stay calm, and okay. I'm having and trying I'm to have like, a human face to face conversation with you. Why is this person upset that that I dox them? Are they okay? Are you, Shut up! You're you're acting you're like unhinged liar. right now. I'm You're acting, acting unhinged right now. You yes, I came on, on your stream. You fucking cuck. Okay, so Jesus can I ask Christ. you a question, please? If I have already acknowledged the mistake I made as far as the doxing thing, why are you trying to tie in the prior criticism that I levied against your tweet to somehow fault me for that as well? Do you want to talk? Oh, she left. She left. Oh my God. I recommend you check out that video on your own time as well, because it's pretty clear she was looking for anything she could to stay mad at Hunter. He apologized for showing the docs, but Keffels decided to focus on a negative tweet he made about her that had nothing to do with the docs to victimize herself further, and when he wasn't having any of that, she went off the handle because he wasn't falling into her hands. There was no reason to stay mad at Hunter, but she wanted to control him and make him apologize for every bad thing he said about her so she can look better publicly on Twitter, but when he wasn't having any of that, she threw a tantrum and left the call instead. Things get a bit more interesting though, as sometime after their argument, Keffels would DM Hunter's wife after realizing the argument made her look bad to public eyes. The first set of messages is Keffels saying that it was outside forces trying to get them to fight, and that she wants to apologize to him privately after speaking ill on his name publicly. The next would be her saying why she can't apologize publicly, that being because she doesn't want to talk about Kiwi Farms publicly and wanting to basically take everything down and move on, saying that it was the Kiwi Farms users in his chat that caused her to lose her cool and start the fight, not her. Hunter was summed things up pretty well after reading these first chat to see. This to me reads a little bit disingenuous. This to me sounds like somebody who recognized that they didn't look too good in the conflict and wanted me to take everything down and they would take everything down about me so long as we were able to talk privately. I don't know why that that needs to happen. Not to mention, there should be a record of what happened and how our conversation went. Because what's stopping Keffels from running off after our private conversation and claiming that I said the T slur or claiming that I did nothing but scream at her the whole time? If there's no evidence to contradict that, then it can just be used and weaponized against me further. Given Keffels is a known manipulator, I can't say he doesn't have a point in wanting everything to be public between them. Keffels would end up making a members only video about Hunter, and so he would go through it and see what she says about him in a video of his own on August 4th. She mischaracterizes him saying he didn't understand the ramifications of accidentally showing the docs, and so Hunter aptly replies. Hunter seemingly did not understand the kind of ramifications of doing that, especially after you start the stream by attacking my character and priming the worst people in your audience to use that information to harm me and the people I care about. So, first and foremost, of course I recognize the potential ramifications of accidentally showing someone's docs. Of course. If I didn't, I would not have apologized. Of course it has potential ramifications, and that is what I was so sorry for. Obviously. And I understand her point here. Her point is clearly because I was crap talking her ahead of time and then I accidentally showed that I was priming people to essentially go after her. Um, I don't know if that's true or not, but I, I don't like this idea that because I criticized her and then I made the mistake of showing the docs that that somehow means I now need to apologize for the criticism prior. A lot of the video is her saying how because he talked bad about her prior to the accidental docs, he was priming his audience to attack her, which is untrue and simply Keffels getting caught up in her feelings after seeing Hunter say mean things about her. At one point, Keffels even says that Hunter blurred out his chat not because of the people that raided it and said vile things about her, but because he wanted to get the video monetized on YouTube. If you look at the video on his YouTube channel, he blurred out the chat for the entirety of the video because if he didn't, it probably would have got demonetized and it would have made him look terrible. What? I blurred out the chat because there were a bunch of losers raiding my chat who's not who are not actually part of my audience who were spamming transphobic BS. 
I literally blurred it as a way to further show respect. What? I was apologizing for the accidental showing of your dead name. If people are in my chat spamming your, jet, uh, your dead name, then I'm going to blur it out. The mods were working overtime to ban as many people as possible during that. What is, what's even the point of bringing this up? Other than to try and make your audience feel like my audience is full of vicious transphobes. I don't have to go any further than this. It's obvious Keffels is mischaracterizing things in order to make herself look better or make her opponent look worse and not actually fix an issue unless it involves the other party submitting at her demands for them. I recommend watching this video as well given the chance because again, it gives a lot of insight on how Keffels is as a person. All of this was just part of the many controversies Keffels had gotten herself into throughout the summer. The number of people against Keffels would grow as she kept mischaracterizing things for what seemed to be no reason other than malice, and so bad actors behind the scenes would start to ramp things up once more. At first, it was the Keffels docs back in March from that unnamed website, but the next situation would be something heading into much more serious territory than before. On August 9th, Keffels would post a video to YouTube unlike anything she's made thus far. She had been swatted on the 7th by people using her docs, pretending to be her and sending emails to every London, Ontario City Council member threatening to shoot people after killing her own mother, notably claiming how she woke up to the police force with a rifle in her face. On August 5th, I was woken up by London police services pointing an assault rifle in my face at my home. She would also claim that the police referred to her by her dead name and referred to her as her son when speaking to her mother. During the arrest, the police officer referred to me by my dead name. I was booked in the station under my dead name. The police, when talking to my mother, referred to me as her son. She talks about her arrest and how the police seized all their electronics and how because of this they were now unemployed and she had to spend thousands of dollars to replace the items. Because of the negligence of the police, we were both left functionally unemployed, and I have spent thousands of dollars replacing our computers and cell phones so our lives aren't completely destroyed by what happened to us. She would place a lot of blame on the police for their actions, saying things like how since they have their fiancé's computer they can't work on their PhD studies and how they are traumatized with how they were treated, and announced that she'd be opening up a GoFundMe to move, recoup losses, and build a legal fund. I started a GoFundMe to move immediately, recoup my losses, and build a legal fund to protect my rights. She would talk about any journalists wanting to speak to her, and ends things off again reiterating that she thought she was gonna die after seeing the gun pointed at her. When I was woken up by police officers and saw the assault rifle pointed at me, I thought I was going to die. The goal of the GoFundMe was 20,000 Canadian, and at the bottom of the page it specifies that if met, she recouped her losses and could move, and anything after that would be put towards a legal fund. Along with this would be a press kit of the evidence bags having her old last name on it to show that the London police had used it, and a copy of the police warrant to search her home. News sources would talk about this incident, and it was soon spread around Twitter like wildfire as people were supporting her after this swatting attack. In an interview with the local news station, Keffels had exclaimed that she went into the hallway and saw the assault rifle, already contradicting herself as she said she woke up to it in her face. When I went into the hallway and then saw that assault rifle. On August 5th, I was woken up by London police services pointing an assault rifle in my face at my home. Keffels would get all her electronics back three days after the swatting on August 10th, with people even recording her at one point while moving the stuff back to her place. While this is going on, she's raising the goal of her GoFundMe, going from 20k to 40k to 80k, and so on that same day, she would stream about why she kept raising the goal of it, and she would say that... People kept asking me why I'm raising the goal when it hits the goal. And the reason why is because... Yes, I'm using these funds to move. But more importantly, once I'm safe, the rest of those funds are going to be used for legal expenses. Because I'm not just moving. I'm also taking legal action. I already have one lawyer, and I'm consulting with two more. I'm going to get justice for what happened to me. And for every other marginalized person in this country who has been victimized. 
So, Keffel says she planned on using the money for legal action, and that's part of why she kept raising the goal. On August 11th, London, Ontario Police Chief Steve Williams would put out a statement saying no dynamic entry happened and that the officers were let in after knocking on the door and presenting themselves. He would also say that at no time under custody was Keffels referred to by her dead name, and the usage of her old last name stems from a previous encounter, as whenever someone comes into police contact they use that current info and keep using it as they didn't know about her name change until they arrested her recently. This all makes sense, and suddenly people were questioning Keffels for the inconsistency in the police response, and why she mischaracterized them dead naming her as pure malice rather than the way the records are handled. Keffels would post saying that her legal team advises her not to talk about her legal plans going forward but that she plans on seeking justice at one point or another, saying how she can't disclose anything yet as this is real life shit and not some online streamer drama. She would say she appreciates all the support she's gotten, and that she finally raised enough money on the GoFundMe to move and that anything additional would go towards her legal fund. You know, that original 80 plus thousand that is currently a little over a thousand because she kept raising the goal on the site. Keffels would wipe her discord most likely because the police are now watching her, and on August 13th would update people saying she is now in a hotel room, along with posting a picture of her cats on the hotel bed. It took Kiwi Farms users only a few hours to find a hotel after cross-referencing the bed sheets, and so on August 18th she would move to another hotel after taunting people that they wouldn't find her now. Also on that day, she would make a brand new YouTube video explaining that she was doxxed by Kiwi Farms users and start to explain how bad the site is, going over three stories of people's suicides that are attributed to the website. She goes on to explain that she would be using a green screen and other measures so that Kiwi Farm users can't harass her anymore, and basically talks about how she will be listening to her legal counsel and that people need to fight back against Kiwi Farms for all that they have done. Kiwi Farms is operated with impunity because they are relatively unknown outside of the internet. We need as many people as possible to know who they are if we plan to fight back against them. Three days later on August 21st, the unnamed website mentioned earlier would hack into her Uber account and order at least $131 worth of food to her new location, with a receipt of the order along to boot. Keffels would post a picture of the food on her new hotel bed sheets, and like clockwork, this new hotel will be doxxed in a few hours, with her pinning the blame solely on Kiwi Farms. The unnamed website would take credit for the Uber hack and post a massive dox of Keffels and her family, and after this Keffels would blame Kiwi Farms more and more and move overseas to flee from the internet harassment she's been getting. She would move to an unknown location and start up a live stream, and the unnamed website would figure out exactly where she was on August 26th thanks to a doorknob, the fact she said she was in Ireland, and because she was living with someone who was previously doxxed months prior, taking credit for doxing her again and announcing she was in Northern Ireland. During all this, Keffels would push her followers to post the hashtag drop Kiwi Farms towards Cloudflare, the website hosting their protection, constantly showing anything she could possibly use to get the website dehosted. The site would go offline for a 3 day period between August 26th to the 29th, showing that this campaign was putting a significant amount of pressure far beyond what people initially believed, with her constantly posting about the site along with followers of hers. On August 27th, Keffels would ramp things up further by telling her Ukrainian followers to go after the physical location where the Kiwi Farm servers are located, also slightly adding the notion that the site hosts pro-Russian propaganda in order to sweeten the message. You know, the country is currently at war between each other. Around this time, an archive post of her wishing someone to get swatted went around, bringing a weird sense of hypocrisy and irony to the whole crusade going on. On August 28th, she would drag Joshua Moon's mother into the mess, despite her having nothing to do with the drama and it being purely out of malice and spite. That same day, she would make a post saying that it was fair game because his site had led to harassment on her end, and that anybody with an active Kiwi Farms account was in her crosshairs, saying that she will dox them herself if she has to in order to ruin their lives, only deleting the tweet because she didn't want to get mass reported off of Twitter. On August 29th, Keffels would state that a Kiwi Farms user identified her location and threatened to show up, but that she found her identity and told the police, again pointing out that the website needs to be taken down. This user would end up posting on 4chan that he went to her location instead of Kiwi Farms on August 30th when the site was back up, and Keffels would use this 4chan post to place the blame on Kiwi Farms rather than the site it came from the next day. The person would come to be known as Teddy, someone who had their own personal beef with Keffels as he believed she and the person she was living with were taking down Union Jack flags in place of transgender flags and he was mad about it. At one point in a post from Jesse Singal, he stated he had no connections to Kiwi Farms but instead is a foodist, a follower of Foodison, someone who is known for making videos saying bad stuff about people who have recently died. 
On the same day she posted the 4chan post, she mentioned how Northern Ireland police showed up to her door because someone had attempted to swat her, but that she was okay and fine, even saying the police were friendly to her. Also on the same day, Cloudflare responded to this campaign by Keffels with a blog post stating they don't like to take down sites simply because it can host bad content, but only if it's considered a legitimate threat to people. Keffels would respond after seeing this blog post, and the campaign would ramp up further after being acknowledged by Cloudflare about what she was doing. On September 3rd, Cloudflare would block Kiwi Farms from using their services after someone posted a threat on the site, along with the mounting pressure from the Keffels campaign, and the site would run into issues staying afloat for the next couple weeks. Keffels would make no mention of the unnamed website that doxed her back in March, hacked her Uber, and doxed her and her entire family during this entire debacle, or even try to shift the momentum to take down that site next, but either way, her goal in getting Cloudflare to drop Kiwi Farms was a success. Keffels would make a post saying the battle was won but the war was far from over, basically one of those self padding back type things while reminding people this kind of stuff happens still, and she'll keep fighting so long as sites like Kiwi Farms are around on the internet. Kiwi Farms has struggled to stay online for a good minute, with the site constantly getting attacked by bad actors trying to keep it down, and things overall started to slow down on that end. Keffels and her army would go back to attacking Destiny, such as her mod Any purposefully changing his Wikipedia page to imply he was the reason she was banned on Twitch when that was a complete lie, with Keffels herself promoting it on her backup Twitter. She would even propose to buy the website from Joshua Moon as a sort of power move, but no cigar as he wasn't going for any of that. After the success of her campaign, a user on the website Odyssey named Winter would leak DMs with her, showing her harassing him after thinking she got the docs of the Kiwi Farms user Winter, the person I mentioned earlier for y'all to remember. The messages took place on September 5th, and she would start by posting pictures of what she believed was his family to try and scare Winter, threatening him saying how she has everything about him. She would make fun of him for going to military school, brag about making six figures that year, and even says that the GoFundMe money is currently in her savings and not being used to sue the London Police Department like she said she would. The rest of their messages are literally just the two of them going back and forth, with Winter making fun of her thinking she docks the right person, and Keffels acting like an anime supervillain trying to scare him after this fail docks. When people on Twitter asked Keffels why she tried to dox somebody despite supposedly being against it, she would instead dodge the question and ask why they would believe things from a Kiwi Farms user. During the entire Drop Kiwi Farms saga and afterwards, Keffels would make posts about going to places, such as how she got her IRL stream set up despite, you know, trying to avoid being doxxed by the bad people on the internet, and at one point accidentally showed her Twitter circle messages, showing her vacationing around Europe and saying where she was going. During a stream on September 14th, Keffels would say that she never said she would use the money to sue the police, but as we've seen before, she said exactly that on August 10th. The thing that they say with this is that I said that this money was for suing the police, which I never did, because I'm not just moving. I'm also taking legal action. She would even say she was able to pay off a year's worth of rent with the GoFundMe money. I have an apartment for October. I'm moving then. I have it. I've already paid. I'm putting it like I'm using the GoFundMe money to pay an entire year in advance. Whenever people question her about whether she's suing the police or not, she'll either ignore or mock them, which while in character is still a sign of deflection on her end. She's even gone on record saying she will never do a GoFundMe breakdown because the people asking are bad faith. Guess it's bad faith trying to figure out if your money is being used for its intended purpose or not. On September 26th, Keffels would upload a video from a stream she did a week prior, clearing up any misconceptions about her initial swatting. The video is a giant mess, such as at one point when she says, they did not go into my apartment until after I was in custody. Yet if you remember, she initially said, On August 5th, I was woken up by London police services pointing an assault rifle in my face at my home. Keffels would even get her fiancé Alex to give their point of view, and Alex would say, And they actually had to go inside the apartment, like in our front foyer, almost right to our bedroom door and they yelled at Clara while she was in bed. So she got up. They were saying Clara Sorrenti. Note that they did not use her dead name at this point either. They said Clara Sorrenti. We know you're in there. Come out with your hands up. So the police woke her up with a gun to her face. Then she had the gun pointed at her in the hallway. 
But now they never even went into the apartment until they had her in custody. Oh, but they also entered the apartment and yelled at her to wake up to arrest her. Everything is a mess of contradictions and dare I say blatant lies, and that's not even me mentioning Alex pointed out the police never misgendered or used her dead name unlike what she initially said in her video. As all this was going down, Destiny was busy getting ready for a debate with Jordan Peterson, a controversial political figure. His fans were excited to see what the debate would entail, and so on October 2nd, people would tune into his live stream to watch everything unfold. However, Destiny would pull a switcheroo in his audience and reveal this to be his Keffel's manifesto, going over everything that he and his team could muster up to show how evil of a person she is. The manifesto goes over a lot of his personal beef with Keffel's and has a lot of what we covered in this video already, but there are a couple of parts with a lot of evidence to go over, so here we go. Destiny would go into the stories of the three people that committed suicide, apparently caused by Kiwi Farms. The first would be Chloe Seagal, a transgender person who had a rough life through and through, such as attempting twice, once on her Twitch stream in 2013 and another in 2015. Kiwi Farms was made aware of her and made a threat in April 2015, with it dying in December 2017, six months before her passing in June 2018. After her passing, a friend would describe her as a person who dealt with a lot in life, ranging from chronic pains to homelessness. A prior partner would echo the same sentiment, saying her passing was from her life issues and the systematic struggles of trying to maintain a home along with mental health care, with no mention of Kiwi Farms. Given the evidence Destiny and his team provides, he will conclude her passing was because of a multitude of real life systematic issues and not because of Kiwi Farms making a threat on her. Next would be Julie Terryberry, someone who grew up in a very messed up household and still had mental issues of her own to deal with. She would start dating someone named Mike who was 10 years older than her and Kiwi Farms would make a threat about her in February 2016. She would find a thread and taunt the users telling them to get their story straight because they were bad at what they were doing. Her relationship with Mike would falter however, and after breaking up she would commit. Someone who was familiar with Julie as a kid would reach out to Destiny and his team and give their own point of view looking into her life. They would say that Julie grew up in a troubled household and at one point even gave her family some hand-me-down clothes after watching everything going on in their lives. They would say that they weren't aware of her Facebook posts or anything beyond just general stuff, and that while they can't say Kiwi Farms didn't have anything to do with their passing, she already had mental issues from her upbringing with no support group to help fix them. They also call out Keffels and those using her passing to push a narrative to further their own goals, saying that Julie had a hard life and didn't deserve her name to be dragged into this clout game. Destiny would conclude that placing the blame solely on Kiwi Farms is wrong, as Julie had already had a rough life even before her thread was made, and so with two out of the way, only one story remained. David Ginder was someone who was known in the emulation scene on the internet, but also had their fair share of drama as well. Kiwi Farms created a thread about them in May 2018, and was mostly inactive, with posts coming after long gaps up until Ginder posted in it themselves on February 7, 2020. They would thank people for gathering up all the weird stuff they've done on the internet and use it to move on in life, calling it a wake-up call for them, with people replying positively much to the shock of Ginder, replying positively as well. They would end up going AFK from the internet for a while in March 2020 after an unknown person had a dox of everybody in their life and they didn't want them to get dragged into their mess. Ginder would come back to the internet in October 2020 and on June 26, 2021 would email Joshua Moon asking him to take down their threat on Kiwi Farms, claiming the doxing was because of the form, offering $120,000 and web services if he does. If he didn't accept the offer however, Ginder would reply with a scan of their passport, proof of them in a photo, and then would commit. Moon and Ginder would go back and forth over email, and things would end off with Ginder saying that all Moon had to do was take the thread down, and that it's all on him now. A Twitter thread by Ginder would echo the same sentiment, pointing out that if Moon was compassionate to them, none of this would happen. Soon after, a friend of Ginder's named Hector would post a note on behalf of a friend of theirs, saying that it was all Kiwi Farm's fault for this happening. Hector would tweet that he spoke with the police and that Ginder did pass away, and that he wouldn't speak about it any further than that. Destiny concludes so far up to that point that it does seem Kiwi Farms is partially at fault for Ginder's death, but points out a crucial detail. There is no conclusive evidence that Ginder is actually dead. There are no police statements, obituaries, death certificates, nothing from their family, even nothing for the United States Department logs. Ginder's passport was never posthumously posted even though they said it would be, and the only thing pointing in the direction that Ginder passed was Hector's tweet, the anonymous friend's note, and Wayne Beckett, their employer, posting a series of messages on Kiwi Farms himself, pinning the blame on them. Interestingly enough, in a USA Today article, Wayne says that while Ginder had been dealing with bullying online, Kiwi Farms wasn't named by them when explaining it. Destiny would conclude that it's possible Ginder just dropped their online profile, and that in order to prove Ginder actually passed, they would need some sort of evidence, but until now, that's all up in the air. 
Something to note is that Destiny points out he found a Twitch account that might be attributed to Ginder, but has no way of proving unless someone else comes forward, so we'll have to wait and see on that. If anybody knows what Nier's Twitch account was and can confirm it, if they know 100%, I can actually show that messages were posted on that Twitch account after Nier had supposedly committed suicide. Destiny would go on to talk about the unnamed website and how they contributed more to Keffel's plight than Kiwi Farms, but that for whatever reason Keffel's doesn't want to talk about them. He would talk about the swatting and go over the inconsistencies like we've seen already, and even talks about the time when Northern Ireland police went to her door. It turns out this wasn't a swatting attempt like she'd been trying to say, but it was actually someone who called the police to report the previous stalker that showed up to her place and took the picture outside. They give a statement to Destiny showing their frustration that Kethels would turn a good deed made out of concern into something out of malice to fit her narrative, and that they only reported to the police that someone had threatened her. He would talk more about the GoFundMe situation, and then would get into the DIY HRT website mentioned earlier run by Chloe, with a lot of info to go over. Now previously in this video, we went over that the site was made for minors to access hormones, that one of the sources made homemade medicine which was extremely concerning, and that Kethel started to support the website on June 26th this very year. Even as recently as September 14th, Kethel would state that she stands by supporting the website, showing that she wasn't backing down despite the very real concern of supplying minors with permanent body altering drugs, run by someone who's bragged about getting minors on HRT behind their parents' backs. I'm glad how well this went. Because I stand by supporting the DIY HRT directory. When questioned about this on the H3H3 podcast on September 9th, she would say it was just like a Twitch stream to the public, and then later on had to drop the slide once Ethan and Hila Klein noticed the link to the site on the top of her website. So where do you guys do this? Is it like a Discord or something, or like a community? Oh, it's like a Twitch stream. Oh, just on Twitch? Yeah. So it's all just out in the public? Yeah, because they 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 make me it sound like you have some kind of secret or some community spot that's not publicly seen where you're where you're talking with kids and stuff. But that's not even the case. No, I want to give you an opportunity to, to talk about this because there's people who are pointing this out that on your website, keffels.gg, you have a link here that says do it DIY HRT. Yeah. So, so it's it's a website where people can learn about DIY hormones. On September 13th, a user in the Destiny subreddit would make a post about the Oto Kanoko Pharmaceuticals website we've seen that makes homemade HRT, showing that they also have a guide on how to make your own bathtub HRT. Destiny and his team would find out that the link is still being passed around even after being scrubbed publicly from the internet, most likely through interested parties that trust one another, along with seeing that Neotard, the owner of the site, lied about its registry where she's located. Also something worth noting, a Twitter thread will show pictures of the boxing, and one of the sides of the box specifically says to keep out of reach of parents in bright red text, meaning this product was made for minors and to keep a secret from their own parents. Keffels herself is familiar with Oto Kanoko Pharmaceuticals, as when on the Red Planet podcast on March 15th, 2022, three months before she starts to sponsor Chloe's DIY HRT site, she makes reference on how someone talked about how concerning the boxing was to them. Um, I remember when, like, fucking, like, Andy and... How do you say his last name? NGO? No, it was, like, no, losing no, it. No, no. Yeah, he was losing his shit about the packaging. What an interesting site to promote and sponsor. They will look into another linked site, Lena Keeve, and find out they had their own bathtub HRT guide as well, with an updated version coming out as recently as this year. The guide was even posted directly in Keffel's own Discord server along with the message encouraging that person to use it for educational purposes, showing that her audience knows the existence of these homemade HRT websites. Destiny would question why Keffels has been so shifty about this info on the website, playing a clip of Chloe saying she personally knows all the providers on her own website. All the homebrew suppliers that, you know, I've listed, um, they're, they're all people that I've, per like, personally talked to, emailed, or DM'd, and I know a lot about their safety methods and whatnot. The next day on the 14th, those two websites would be silently taken off Chloe's website, and on the 15th, they would add a web crawler to keep track of the archive links Destiny and his team were keeping, along with adding an age gate despite the site's purpose being for minors to access HRT, as said by Keffels herself. Even small things like the mention of a miner to get Bitcoin was changed, clearly showing they were trying to scrub any mention of miners on the site to save their own skin. 
It was clear that Keffels, Chloe, and whoever else was with them were watching Destiny and his team and trying to thwart their investigation on the website. Things get really interesting on September 17th, when Chloe herself reached out to Destiny and was trying to figure him out and what he was doing. Funnily enough, inadvertently confirming those messages Keffels sent to Winter were legit and not fake like she tried to imply. Chloe would say that Keffels has offered to speak to him one-on-one -on -one to squash their beef after seeing Destiny was gathering this really incriminating info on her, and their convo would wane off about the drama, with Chloe admitting she regrets letting Keffels sponsor the site due to the drama surrounding her name. Destiny would get into a conversation with Keffels herself for the first time, with her trying to convince him to drop his investigation as it was a waste of time, notably saying that neither of them want to deal with the manifest of reaching the news cycle. She would say that she never wanted to talk about that unnamed website due to them being smarter than Kiwi Farms, and that if this situation ends up in the news cycle, it could lead to his YouTube channel being terminated. You know, a sly threat at Destiny for daring to search for the truth and publish what he and his team found on her. It gets even weirder though, as later on the founder of the Psycho not wiki, Josekins, would message Destiny that night and try to say they were the founder of the DIY HRT site and started it with their friend, seemingly trying to fish for any info from him about his investigation while also trying to throw him off the scent. The DIY HRT GitHub repo would be taken offline so no future changes to the site could be tracked, and the site would get blacklisted from archive.org after being asked so. Destiny would beg the question, if the site is just a wiki listing sources as Keffels has claimed, what's with all the secrecy and fishiness surrounding the people involved? Going as far to track everything they're investigating, so much in fact Keffels was willing to message him one on one to get him to stop. Funnily enough, during the stream, Chloe would start to message Destiny, showing that what he was dropping was really getting to her. Um, so I don't know why Chloe is messaging me right now saying she's never linked to any of this stuff or supported any of this before, but... On September 19th, Chloe would step away from the DIY HRT site after claims of harassment, notably pointing out that Keffels had nothing to do with her decision to leave, which after seeing all the stuff Destiny and his team gathered, well, that's up for whatever you think. The link would be removed from Keffel's site shortly after Chloe left it. On a stream the next day, Keffels would say that Chloe left because of the harassment after the H3H3 podcast being too much to bear. After I appeared on the H3 podcast, the harassment ramped up insanely against her because Ethan and I talked about the DIY HRT directory. She explains that she won't be publicly involved with the site anymore because she's too high profile. The problem with me is that my profile is too high and anyone who is like a so anyone who's associated with me basically is at the risk of getting harassed a lot so i think like it's best if i stay away from things like the diy directory because although i support them and i want to see them succeed my involvement publicly at will hurt them it will direct really bad actors towards them. But given what we've seen, it seems there's a couple more things she's not willing to spill on why exactly she and Chloe decide to leave the website. What we covered from the manifesto isn't even everything. There are so many moments of Keffel slandering Destiny that I didn't even include because it's better to hear it from the man himself, so I recommend checking out his video when you can. There are other miscellaneous things in it too, like when Keffels went off the handle in DMs after someone unfollowed her on Twitter, or how she tried to bully Jesse Singal into not speaking about the unnamed website that was part of the doxing, despite it being integral to the entire picture overall. The Manifesto is a good piece of work from Destiny and his team, and they deserve its contents to be read for those wanting to learn more about Keffels and her overall internet presence. Keffels might be the most interesting individual we've gone over on this channel thus far. Never have I ever seen someone with such a large platform bully, berate, and lie to such a degree, and have a fanbase that listens to and echoes those same lies around the internet, mainly on Twitter from what I've noticed. All the shady stuff her, Chloe, and whoever else is behind the DIY HRT site and what they did trying to suppress the info Destiny and his team were gathering was insane. I understand if an underage transgender person is having issues getting the proper help they need, but to sponsor a website run by someone who's bragged about getting minors on homemade drugs behind their parents' backs is extremely suspect. After seeing all the evidence, it's pretty conclusive that the only reason she even dropped the site was because Destiny and his team were digging into everything and it could make her look bad. Otherwise, why try to talk to him for the first time ever to begin with? She did the same thing with Hunter Avalon after she realized their conversation could make her look bad, so there is no difference going on here. Recently, people started to question her for not using the GoFundMe money to sue the police like she initially said, so she would post and delete what looks to be a legal document, adding even more mystery as to what exactly is going on with all that. 
I tried my hardest to cover everything I possibly could on Keffels, but I'm willing to bet I missed a couple of notable things because she's gotten herself into that much shit with people on the internet. She has recently made comments on her Discord server trying to further her reach outside of Twitter on the internet, and I hope this video does its job in going over this person before any of y'all decide to support her or not because y'all deserve to know the truth. There's really no proper way to end this video. I hope I don't need to make a part 2, but given how everything is looking and starting to turn against her, that may end up happening, so we'll just have to wait and see. Kiwi Farms is back up like nothing ever happened, so that entire crusade was for nothing other than clout in the end. One thing I just can't get out of my head is that given her entire internet persona revolves around a community of individuals whose sole purpose is to attack and silence others, I wouldn't be surprised if in the future she ends up getting more devious behind the scenes stuff exposed because that's all these people want to do is epically own everyone while pretending they're a perfect person themselves. That's more of a Twitter thing in general, but it's still something I ponder about even after finishing up this video. Hell, making this video is a risk in of itself, because I'm certain that Keffels and those bad individuals are probably going to try to find out ways to silence me, whether it be reporting my channel or my Twitter page. They already tried with Rakito Lawwood mass reporting his YouTube channel before he got reinstated, and even recently at TwitchCon, Keffels went to Destiny's wife and told her that if he doesn't stop going after her, that she'll get his YouTube channel banned. Thankfully someone else was there when this happened and said their own piece on Twitter, otherwise who knows what kind of lie Keffels would have tried to conjure up by now. This is all some serious stuff, so we'll just have to wait and see what happens in the future. What do you guys think about Keffels after going through all this mess? Her time on the internet is far from over, but it seems the tide is starting to shift, so make sure to tell me your opinions in the comments below. Thank you for watching today's video, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, make sure to like and subscribe, and as always, with all of that out of the way, I will see you guys later.